But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're ready to get your day started off right in God's Word. We are on 1 Samuel chapter chapter 12, all right? We're on 1 Samuel chapter 12. Haven't read it yet, of course. Pause the video, read through it a couple times, writing everything that sticks out to you. These previous couple of chapters of all kind, you can, you can kind of meld them all together. They all deal with uh, the, the, the anointing of Saul and the transition from uh, a theocracy. For Israel, which is a nation under the rulership of God, or having God as their king. Now, in essence, we're going to see in this chapter that that's not really going to change, but we see the transition from that to now a monarchy, where they have a man as king, and that's Saul. So Samuel starts this chapter, here's the overview, he he starts the chapter off by gathering up all the uh, the Israelites, and he, and he pretty much asked them for their honest opinion about his ministry, kind of having like a... Uh, uh, a performance review of how he did as the judge and prophet of Israel before King Saul and said, hey, have I have I lied to you guys? Have I taken of any of your things? Have I taken any of your cattle, any of your land? Have I defrauded you uh, in any way? And of course, the people are like, oh, no, of course not, Samuel. You have been great. You are a man of God. You were so much better than Hophni and Phinehas and than the priests that came before you. No, you did nothing wrong. And, and Samuel said, okay, well, that's great. And then he goes into, well, who was it that brought you out of e your fathers out of Egypt? And he goes into this review of uh, what God has done for Israel throughout their whole entire history, pretty much since the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, saying, you know, it was God that led your father Jacob into Egypt to save them uh, from the famine. Then it was when they cried out because of the slavery and bondage they experienced in Egypt, it was God once again that brought them out with Moses and Aaron. And, and then he just kind of goes through the the wilderness wanderings to the time of the judges when you were oppressed and every time you guys needed help every time you were knuckleheads every time you were stubborn and you cried out to god uh when you realized you did wrong god rescued you he he, he redeemed you he, he brought you out of that bondage that oppression whatever it was you were going through at the time and he says, but now, since King Nahash of the Ammonites, you know, was gathering up against you, all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Instead of God take us out of this situation, God, give us a king. Give us a man that he can take us out of this situation. And that's, in essence, rejecting God. And Samuel's bringing up to their, to the forefront of their mind is, guys, you are rejecting God. This is a, a great sin you're doing here. Now, God is allowing this to happen. He's allowed this to happen. He's even allowed your new king to have this victory over Nahash and the Ammonites. But he, and here's the main point uh, for today. He's like, but I want you to remember that God is still the king of kings. All right. All because you have this human king, do not think that it is him and only through him alone that you can have success, that you can be uh, defended against the enemies around you. No. You and your king must still be obedient and faithful to God. That's what he's saying in this chapter. He's like, if you will continue to follow uh, my word, if you continue to keep my commandments, all right, then I will bless you. I will protect you. I'll provide for you. And that includes your king, you and your king. Because he says in the chapter that God will bless both Israel and the king and his reign. So in essence, the main thing, like I said, I want us to get out of this chapter is we cannot seek or solely rely in man to provide us what only God can. Do not think you're secure in your own ability. Do not think you're secure in the abilities of someone close to you or someone uh, you admire. No, God is above all that. God is great. God is mighty. He is El Shaddai, almighty God. And that's what Samuel is reminding the people of here. Yes, God has allowed you to have this king, but God is greater than this king. If this king turns from God, if he disobeys God and he worships false idols like you guys have done in the past in the time of the judges, guess what? That king's not going to bring any success or blessing to Israel and he's going to be a hindrance to you guys going forward. No, you and your king must continue to follow God and keep his commandments. All right, and what that shows us today is, yes, we may be under the leadership of our boss or our parents or our pastor or whatever it may be. And that's good if you have good godly leaders in your life. But always remember, above that is God. Do not put your faith in man. Put your faith 
in God. It's good to follow godly leaders. It's good to have authority in your life, but understand that God is above all. All right. And first, our first and utmost priority isn't our faithfulness to a man. It is to God above that and keeping his commandments and faithfully uh, following him and obeying him in our lives that we can be a light and a testimony to all those around us. And that's what Samuel is telling the people here. All right, you have the king and the people realize the sin they did against God. And he says, but God is gracious. You can continue to follow God. You and your king can continue to follow God and keep his commandments. And God will continue to bless just as he did to your fathers in the past as well. That's it for today's chapters, guys. Uh, it's a pretty short one. Uh, just what are you putting your faith in, in man or in God? And it's important to understand that God is above and supreme to anything we see here on the earth. And uh, hopefully that's what Samuel is hoping and praying that the people of Israel and Saul would recognize as well. Now, we can read further and we know what happens with Saul uh, in the end. But in the beginning, it wasn't that bad. Saul was a humble man. But in these next couple chapters, we'll start to see the pride of Paul, uh, Paul the pride of Saul go up. And the decline of Israel spiritually start to go down. Uh, but that is for another day. Take what you guys learned today. Tell somebody about it. Tell your accountability partner. Tell your parents. Start that conversation around God's word. Hope you have a blessed day.